Welcome back to my channel. My name's Rich and today we're going to be doing work on this. Right, well, it's still May and no, one, one, still locked down. For many, that means furlough still. That's the right filter. So we're just going to quickly do an oil change on the car. So my car's the 2012 uh, Fiat Punto Evo, 1.2 litre, very economical. Even to the point now where I do use it a lot more than I've used previous cars in favour of the bike sometimes, just because it is so cheap to run. But uh, now we need to do an oil change. I hate working on cars because you just can't get to anything, it's so much effort. I've just spotted an oil leak coming from the transmission. I don't know whether it's the clutch or uh, the shifter or whatever it is, God knows, but getting to it and changing whatever oil seal it needs is going to be a right nightmare. Oh, that wasn't actually that tight. I can see the nut above it is not, not turning, so that's good. Let's loosen that off nicely. So this here, on this engine, needs... In fact, you know what, I can just move that out of the way. I don't need to take that completely off. Um, so yeah, if this had been the 1.4 litre 16 valve, that would have been an easier thing to get undone and do up it would have been certainly easier to do up because uh, you could just simply get a torque wrench and socket on there no problem and that bar wouldn't have got in the way um, but with this I needed to buy a 12 millimeter um, what do you call it Allen head and also I just need because that's got a half inch square drive in it. I needed to put an adapter on uh, and then when you get your torque wrench on you'd never get it in there. You wouldn't have all these gubbins if it was just a hex head and a quick spanner. And the major difference is this type requires 45 newton meters of torque when you're doing it up which just seems excessive um, but you definitely need a torque wrench to do that. The, the nut head type just requires 20 newton meters of torque so you could almost get away with just doing it up spanner tight like I do everything on my bikes. I've checked I've got the uh, same filter as this one which I have. Uh, nice new shiny one. If you're like me and you just ram a screwdriver through the old one sometimes, it's not usable again in an emergency, so um, I'm going to use this one anyway, uh, which does the job. It's, um, it's just got these little metal pimples inside, which won't grab greasy metal, so I have just put a piece of uh, rubber get it on the edging on there, which does grip, it does the job just nicely. Uh, so I'm going to drain the oil first and then I'm going to get the filter off. clean sump plug. It came out like that, just covered in oil, no grit, there was no graunchiness when I was undoing it, so it's all fine. 
some people put little magnets on these things to catch any flakes of metal from engine wear um, you don't need to all that oil moving around in there being pumped through the chances of picking anything up on there are quite slim um, you're far better off just inspecting the filter that's what the filter's job is right I'll just cleaned around there you don't really need to any nothing's going to fall in don't forget if it's the 1.2 or 1.4 liter 8 valve this is 45 newton meters if it's the 1.4 liter 16 valve with the hex head type it's 20 newton meters I find it really strange that um, in my vast collection of tooling I don't have a 16mm socket aside from one that's in my impact set. Oh. Annoying. Ask me, this seems to be on here a bit tight, but just awkward, really. There you go, that's the loose down, should go by hand. Right, it's got to be prepared for a few dribbles to come out of there. Taking the protective plastic cover off the um, new filter. Um, I, some people say it doesn't matter whether you put old or new oil engine on that sill, uh, unless it's really graunchy, old oil will be fine. I you know, personally just put new oil on it, might as well. You can have a couple of cupfuls of crappy oil in your engine anyway, still, but this is all about the seal there. See how many grit getting on there, but. You know, I've just wiped the surface of that clean. Um, that's, this might as well be clean as well. So, um, depending on the position of the filter, you might want to put oil inside first. This one is completely horizontal, so there's no point. I'm just going to end up tipping it all out. So, I'm just going to go and put a bit of oil on there and then screw it on. Right, so just going back on myself, I've got this cross member on with uh, both the nuts done up and torqued up. The uh, sump nut back on and torqued up. The filter on, done up hand tight. So just need to get the uh, oil in. I don't know if you can see this, probably you can't because of the light, but I've got four and a half litres in here according to the measurer. So I'm just gonna pour in enough oil so I've got about just under two litres left. Then I'm gonna get the car off the ramps, run the engine, let it circulate, get into the filter, let it settle and check the dipstick and top it up. Right, so that's done that. So uh, just gonna get the car off the ramps, run the engine, 
let it settle, check the dipstick. really good and it's got these little ramps onto ramps for smaller cars so you don't scrape anything on the bottom fairings or skirts or anything like that oh, it's so much easier to work on these things I've just run it a couple of miles up and down the road I'm gonna let the engine oil settle down and um, check the dipstick see if I need to top it up to a quarter Six litres. Of course, it had to fill the filter up. Well, on my next bid, we are back to motorcycles because I need to do a brake fluid change on the XV535. Thanks for watching.